have your attention, please? Uh, we're on the home stretch here. You guys have done awesome. You never know when you get a surprise. We're supposed to be here till five, but you never know. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah, <laughs> I know. Motivator, keep you going. Um, so uh, we're almost done with the class classroom uh, procedures. So the first day, you f you're pretty you're pretty clear about what's going to happen. Then for the next few days, for the first few days, every day before the coach starts play, playing the game, you ask for all the attention of all the kids every day, and you say, we're ready to play the game. Uh, Johnny is going to try to earn all the points, and how can you help? And, and make sure that they tell you, uh, okay, so you're my kids. How can you help Johnny earn points? Do your own work. Excellent. What else can you do? Not giving him attention for not getting behind Then he does the right thing. You can let him know. Johnny, you're helping. You're being helpful. Excellent. What else? Yes. If he doesn't do the right thing, you can ignore. You can use the ignore signal. Actually, that's really a cool thing, that ignoring thing. And it's not just for the focus student. It's for any kid. Anybody that bothers you, you just put up the ignore signal. <laughs> uh, anything else that you can do to help? You can do your, you can, yes, you can do your own work. You follow directions. You do what the teacher wants you to do. And if you do it, then people can see that you're doing it. And that's very cool. Excellent. So let's start. Uh, so then you reviewed the expectation briefly with the focus student. And you can just go over and say, um, you know, are you ready to play the red and green card game? Oh, you don't play <laughs> Are you ready to play the red and green card game? Do you remember, you know? What to do to keep the card on green? Excellent. I know you'll do great. What would you like to earn today? Oh, yeah, leave early. Leave early. <laughs> oh, you want to leave early? <laughs> <laughs> OK. Uh, so and then you sit near, like I said, the first few days, you're, you're really close to the student. And then from day four, day four and five, you, you kind of go stand near the teacher. Um, and you provide feedback and give points. The teacher teaches and the coach operates the card. So remember, that's the difference between typical uh, uh, coaches or consultants that, that help children. Typically, you know, you will help the kid. The kid is doing a math problem. The kid doesn't know how to do it. And then the helper helps. No. If the kid doesn't know how to do a math problem, you say, how do you ask for help? And then when they raise their hand and wait for the teacher, it's green card. If they say, I don't know how to do this problem, then it would be red. Okay? So, so you're, you don't help them with the task. You only give them feedback with if they're doing the behavior the right way. Um, when the time is up, you debrief with the student. Oh, you know what? You just finished playing the game. You did an awesome job. You know, that was really cool the way you blah, blah, blah. And you give them some feedback on how they did it. Uh, ask the teacher to stop the class, announce the outcome and the special activity, do the activity with the class immediately, put feedback card in the backpack because they get a feedback card every day. The coach goes with the kid and puts the feedback card wherever it goes to make sure that it's there. <laughs> and, and then the coach calls the parents each day for five days. And like I say, this is huge. Parents love this. Now, if you, um, you don't have to call them. You can email them or you can, uh, if you meet them at school, you know, if they pick the kid up. But you have to contact the parent. You have to contact the parent every single day to let them know how well the kid did. Very important. Um, what happens if the co when the coach transfers the program to the teacher? The coach gives all the material to the teacher. They get the red and green card with the lanyard, the dry erase pen, the timer, the folder with the daily summary chart and the feedback slips to send home each day. So all this stuff the, the teacher gets, okay, to keep. Then the coach asks if the teacher feels comfortable running the cart, and if needed, the coach role plays with the teacher. You know, if the teacher says, well, I don't really know how to do it. Okay, I'll be the kid, you'll be the teacher, and then you role play. Coach asks if the teacher needs coaching in the classroom on day six to provide support. Sometimes the teacher says, eh, I really don't. Actually, a lot of times, the teacher wants for the coach to stay longer. 
<laughs> you know, but we have to wean them. So, uh, but we actually, with the preschool program, we do have three days of transition. That's one of the big differences. The coach does the first five days, then day six, seven, and eight, the coach is still in the room and does it together with the teacher, and then the teacher takes over. With the, the kindergarten through third grade, we just, coach goes five days, and then the teacher takes over, and it usually works really well. So you kind of have to be, because the teacher loves having you in the classroom as a coach. You know, it's another adult, and it's positive. Um, <clears throat> but we remember the whole idea is to get the teacher to use the principles. Um, the coach explains to all students that the teacher will be taking over and that they need to continue to help by following directions. It's kind of nice because the kids have gotten used to the coach and they, they, everybody loves the coach. You know, the student loves the coach, the kids love the coach, the teacher loves the coach, the parents love the coach. You, the coach plays a very small role, but a very important role. And so, so the coach will say to the kids, I've been playing this game with you guys, and now your teacher is going to play the game. And I want to show you this, um, this little clip where she does really a nice job uh, telling the kids about transferring the, the role. After the target student has completed five successful days, it will be time to transfer the card over to the teacher. Each day, you will have moved further away from the student and closer to the teacher. This way, the student gets into the habit of watching the card when the teacher takes over. The child must be taught that it is his responsibility to watch the card, no matter where it is in the classroom, and keep it on green. Oh, I like the way everybody looked at me right away. You know what, boys and girls? Today is the very last day that I'm going to be here with you playing the red and green card game with Vita. But after today, Miss Doyen's going to take over and she's going to be your coach and your teacher. Wow! She gets to wear two hats. Have you ever heard that before? The coach uh -huh. and the teacher hat. Could okay? We, we want to for sale. And we're doing a very special thing starting tomorrow because I'm not here with my stopwatch to know if Vita's earning her points. There's a special sound that's going to help your teacher remember. I want you to listen real quick. Yeah. Did you hear that sound? Yeah. Like a cash register. Cha-ching! When you hear that sound, you need to ignore that sound. But your teacher's not going to ignore it. She's going to know at that time if Vita earned her point for the game. Isn't that cool? So the sound is just going to come up all by itself, and your teacher will be listening. But I wanted you to know what that sound was, because tomorrow you're going to be listening to it. Okay? At the time of the transfer, to help the teacher, you should have a notebook or companion folder with the following materials. Exactly. The daily summary sheet, green red cards for each day, daily monitoring forms, a menu of reinforcers with additional activity ideas, the signed agreements, a device to help the teacher keep points, a green red card on a lanyard, information on how you can be reached if help is needed. Possible points. It's recommended that the child is presented with a green button when the teacher takes over. The button should be worn each day and left at school. The button will remind all the adults in the school to catch the child doing the right thing. You'll want to stay in touch with the team to monitor how the child is doing and provide support if necessary. Good, Your goal is to problem solve with the team so they can implement the program successfully and independently. You could call me and I could role play with them, or you could role play with them and, and say, you know, I noticed, Edward, that you're, you know, you, you seem to be talking out without raising your hand. And this is how I want you to do it. And then teach him, and then the next day when he's doing it, really pray. So, uh, the, the only thing we haven't talked about a lot is the, the phone call home. And that phone call home c it can be very, very short. Just, hi, this is your first step coach. I played a red and green card game with Johnny today. We did it during math time. He did a great job. He, whatever. And, uh, and then you say to the parents, now remember, he's going to bring the card home. And remember to sign it. And then you're going to say three positive things to him. What are you going to say? Um, and the parents said, oh, I don't know what to say, then you help them. And, and also in the, in the material, uh, 
the there is a agreement to participate, and you can copy all this stuff. But it has. Oh, I'm lying. <laughs> oh no, it's this way. It has um, the responsibilities of the participant. So it has the responsibility of the teacher, the responsibility of the coach, and the responsibility of the parents. And this is what you have in front of you when you have that first parent meeting. And during that meeting, uh, the parents brainstorm with you things that they can do with the child when they bring the card home. But it also gives them ideas on what they can say when the kid comes home, a positive uh, statements. For example, wow, you earned your reward today. I'm proud of you. Uh, you must have worked hard in school today. You sure are responsible to bring your card home every day. So we give the parent actually some examples. If they don't know what to say to the kid, they can just pick three of these, you know, to tell the child. Um, and then you, so you say to the parent, what are you going to say when Johnny brings a card home? And then you're going to say, what are you going to do with him? You know, what kind of activity? And they say, well, you know, we need milk at the store and all six kids want to go. Maybe Johnny can just go with his dad to the store to get milk because he did a good job. You know, so you kind of, you kind of come up with <laughs> activities. Um, and then you say to the parent, uh, you know, I'll be looking forward to getting the card back from him tomorrow at school. I'll talk to you tomorrow. So it's a very short phone call, just a few minutes long, and but it's very, very important. You cannot not do it, okay? If they don't have a phone, you send a note home with the kid, you know, and put a pin it to their shirt or put it in a backpack. You have to somehow give parents this positive information about their child. So here's an example of a call. <laughs> Day, you will make a short call to the parent to report how the game has gone for the day, remind the parents to make three positive statements to the child for doing well at school while playing the game, help them come up with ideas about the special time they will spend with their child, remind them to sign and return the card to school the following day. Story. Or yeah, and make sure that when you do the activity, you tell him, oh, look, Matthew, we're doing this because you did a great job today. So that he knows, you know, the linkage between that good activity and the special activity and how well he did today here at school. So I'm going to put the card in his um, homework folder. And uh, if you have any questions, please call me. You have my number. And I'm going to be calling you tomorrow to let you know how he does tomorrow. But if you have questions between today and tomorrow, just um, call me. Okay, so now we're finished with the, with the uh, procedures for the school component. Do you have any questions? Do you think you can do this? Yes. It's pretty, pretty simple. And the, the nice thing about the implementation guide is that it has step by step by step what to do. Okay, so it's, if you have the materials, it'll remind you. So we're done with the classroom component. And now the coach is going to work with the parents on the home base component, okay? So um, what are the parents expected to do during home base? They're supposed to meet once a week for about 45 minutes with the first step coach. During this meeting, they will complete a, a checkup list. And these checkup lists are not tests. They're just, uh, they're just information about how well parents know their child. So hopefully you have both the parent or the, the mom and the dad. Typically we only get the mom, you know. So since we hardly ever had any dads, we made something called the dad tape. And we made a tape for that so they can at least watch a video and see, you know, what we've been working on. But, but we, parents can fill out this checkup and it has to do with how well they know their child. And when you have both parents fill out this checkup, it's kind of interesting. Like, for example, what new skills and ideas did your child learn in the past month? They'll come up with totally, two totally different things, you know. Uh, did your child have a good time at school this week? And one will say one, one will say the other. Sometimes they will be together. And it's not a test. It's simply how much communication do they have with their kid and, and how much do they, um, do they know about our child? Like, like, who does your child like to play with? You know, do you know? 
what you know who who their friends are, who they like to play with. So it's really nice. The more parent, more information parents have, and the more they're <coughs> together on it, the better it is. And every week there is a checkup like this about different topics. Uh, then we discuss the parent tips, and like I said, <clears throat> uh, these are. Uh, well, actually, they're in here. I can show you in here, too. This coach guide has everything that's in the parent guide, plus all the tips and all the activities. So all the little cards are in here. So you know exactly what the parents have. So if they call you and they say, you know, I don't understand that, uh, that the card number six, the parent help card, then you can open up your guide and you can, t you can see what they're talking about. But usually the coach goes over all the, the parent help or the parent tips with the parent. And as a coach, you don't want to come off as an expert, like I know it all, you know, and you know nothing. So usually if you have children yourself or if you have, you know, um, uh, a relationship with people, you can say, yeah, you know, I often do that. You know, I will, I will ask two or three questions at the same time instead of just asking one question at a time. Uh, yeah, you know, sometimes with my kid, you know, I'll yell at him from the kitchen and I'll say, remember to clean up your bedroom instead of going to them and getting eye contact. And, you know, so kind of make it personal so that they know that you're, that you're human as well and, um, and that you make mistakes as well. Um, so you discuss these, these parenting tips, then you practice the games to play with the child. And this is interesting. Uh, we found that a lot of parents... Uh, really don't know how to play games with their kids. So we actually will often role play and we'll say, you know, sometimes this is really kind of tricky to play this game. How about if you're the kid and I'm you? And then you play the game so that you don't put them down, but you show them how to do it. Um, and, uh, and we ask them to do the activity cards for five to ten minutes each day with the child. So these activities, these yellow ones are the activities. They are, no matter how bad the kid is at school, they still we want for the parents to, to play these games with the kid. Um, so I will give you a little example here of home base. This is my colleague Bonnie, who is totally awesome. Kid, you will find the home base guide, the home base cards, and the materials they will need to do the activities. You need to familiarize yourself with these materials before meeting the parent. We assure the parent that these home-based activities are to help the child do better in school rather than being a parenting class or family therapy. You should provide parents with appropriate referrals if needed. Encourage parents to play for approximately five minutes each night. Call in the middle of the week to ask how things are going and to answer any questions that come up. Remind parents to do the activities. Also, call before each meeting to confirm your appointment. Keeping the appointment at a regular time will help everyone remember and attend. You will get a timer. Here's a little uh, case to keep everything in. There's a notepad and some markers and some stickers for when he does a really good job like for you. Yeah. So we have, we'll have a self-contained place for you to keep your cards and that way uh, it'll be easier for you. And actually, if you would, you know, prefer having these put on a ring, I can do that for you before I come next week. That would be good. That would, that this, would be good. The Things rings tend are to get nice. lost easily in mm -hmm. our house. Yeah. yeah. So I'll I'll remember Boys. to do that for you, and I'll bring a hole puncher and we'll fix these cards. Up. That stack of cards is that all? Um, those are all activities. Half of them are activities, and half of them are tips. They, they, they come in here and there. Do they get overwhelmed when they see all that? Well, we give them only one set for each week. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. so they only get, yeah, but they get to keep them, you know, yeah. Yeah, otherwise it would get very they go forget it. I'm not doing this. It's too much work. Yes, right. exactly. But no, there's only a few for each week. So the first week, they talk about sharing the day, you know, sharing school. And the child practices giving information. The parents listens and gives encouragement. Information gives parents the power to help children be successful outside the home. And this is really interesting because usually when you say to parents, when he comes home, do you talk to, uh, to him about school? Yeah, but he doesn't say anything. Uh, so if you say, what did you do today? 
Uh, nothing. What did you like best? Recess, you know, <laughs> or snack. Those are the two answers. So we, we, t we teach parents to ask questions that are open-ended, where, where the child has to give longer answers. And, uh, and we, we teach parents to listen, you know, and to give encouragement and not interrupt the child and not, you know, problem solve and just let, let the kid talk. But this is important because a lot of parents, you know, they, they don't know how to ask those questions. Excuse me. The, this, what? Is there a reason why you don't have a cat the life age? Uh, yeah, well, that's a good question. She says, why don't you have a capitalized age? Sorry. Well, um, these activities came actually from Oregon Social Learning Center who worked with uh, juvenile delinquents and their families. And they, the person who created a lot of these activities, this was her thing. And she wanted, her name is Kate Cavanaugh, she's one of the, the authors, and she wanted to keep home-based with a small H and a capital D. So, that's all I know. Uh, <laughs> Week two is cooperation, and this is, this is really cool because during week two, the parents actually uh, put a cooperation chart on the refrigerator, and they get a bunch of stickers in their packet, and uh, every time when they, because they always say, my kid never listens to me, and then we say, you ask them a question, if they listen, they get to put star on the, on the chart, and it's amazing how many times the child actually does listen. And the parents are really shocked that, oh my gosh, he really does listen a lot of the time, even though they say he never listens to me, he never follows directions. So we actually have them, you know, uh, keep data on that. But the cooperation chart is very, very helpful, very um, fun for the kids to do, very fun for the parents. And uh, being cooperative allows the child opportunities to avoid problems. And so we tell parents, uh, first you have to do the listening one, you know, week one, and the sharing one. Then you do cooperation. And then in week three, we will talk to you about limit setting. What do you do if they don't follow the rules? And we actually give them uh, uh, time out procedures on how to do time out appropriately and how to teach the child. And what's so funny is the same with everything else. Once you teach a child, you role play with them how to do time out at home, you hardly ever have to use it, mm -hmm. you know? And so like, for example, I was doing a uh, home base with this kid and he, uh, his father was very uh, aggressive, very, he loved to play video games and, and the kid did whatever the father said. The mother was kind of wimpy. You know, and the kid wouldn't listen to the mom very well. She would ask him to clean up, and he would talk back to her and not do it. But if the father told him, he would do it. And so the mother was really hurt by this whole thing. So I said, so I'm, I'm the coach. And I said, so what do you do, you know, when he doesn't, when he talks back to you, he doesn't want to clean up? She says, well, I send him to his room. So I said, well, let me go look at the room. <laughs> you know, gosh, the bedroom is like filled with toys and TV and this and that and the other. And I said, oh, no, we're not doing that anymore, <laughs> you know. So, so I said to the kid, and the dad was there. I said to the kid, okay, so when your mom asks you to do something and you don't do it, she's going to tell you, you can choose to go to time out or you can clean up your toys. Uh, and then you can choose. If you, if you choose not to clean up your toys, this is what's going to happen. And so we clear the bathroom. You want to have a, a space that's very boring. Usually, you know, the entrance to a staircase or a laundry room or a toilet, something. And, and, and usually what I do is just out of practical things. I take the, the toilet paper, you know, out and I take the garbage can out and I try to make it as safe as possible so that they're not going to mess up. It has to be boring. And, and then I, you know, then I say, okay, so if I've been asked to go to, to time out, this is where I go, and I go, and I go sit on the pot, and, and then I said, if I'm quiet, then your mom can set the timer for three minutes, and if I'm quiet for three minutes, and after three minutes, I can come out, and we show them the whole thing. The kid's right there, and I'm acting out, acting it out. So now, if mom asks you to go to time out, and you start screaming and kicking and, and yelling and doing all that stuff, then you lose the privilege to go to time out. And that's really, really serious. <laughs> you don't know how serious it is. But when you lose the privilege to go to time out, that is serious business. 
then something really serious is going to happen. We don't tell them what it is. It may be that they don't get to watch TV or they lose a privilege, right? So, so then you say to the kid, okay, show me. Pretend that your mom just asked you to clean up and you chose not to clean up and go to a timeout. Show me how they do it. And they say, oh my gosh, you did great. That was awesome. You know, so you can choose. Next time, you can choose either to clean up your toys or go to timeout. You hardly ever have to put them in timeout because they choose to clean up. So again, it's all about, you know, making things predictable for the kids and teaching them how, how this works. Um, I remember in my classroom, I would, I would do that with my whole class. I would teach them time out, and I would say, and if you really, you know, if you don't follow directions going to time out, then you're going to lose the privilege to be in time out. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> yeah. Um, so, like the example that you gave before, after the child completes timeout, would you still require them to clean up? Oh yes, yes. You ask him, and you but you help. <coughs> then you say, "How about if he, you did a great job going to timeout? Let's let's clean up together, and you help him to clean up." Yes. Mm -hmm. But but do do don't don't make him do it and get into the power storm again. Just say, you know, I'll help you clean up, and then you go. Yeah. Good, good point. Okay, so then week four is problem solving. And in problem solving, uh, you know, they are learning to stay calm and brainstorm. And parents help them to guide and encourage and suggest steps to the goal. And in, in problem solving, it's kind of cool because there are lots of um, calming down activities. Like, you know, you feel like you're a balloon and, and now the balloon deflates. You know, counting and being on a cloud and... There are lots of fun activities to teach them to be like a noodle, you know, to, to calm down and problem solve and brainstorm. So, um, so they see uh, problems as opportunities rather than obstacles, and they feel empowered and, and capable. Week five is friendship skills, and this is uh, another very important thing that they learn skills, uh, you know, to, to make friends. Empathy and self-control. Empathy, again, is a skill that we can teach children. They're not born with it, but we can teach them how to have empathy, how to look at the problem from another person's perspective. Um, and then the last one is confidence building, and I really like this one because uh, it has really cool activities like uh, the parents write a note and put it in the kid's uh, lunchbox, or they flip a quarter and when it's heads, they're supposed to say something positive about the mom and you know, they're putting little things under a pillow, and they're really cool, cool kinds of things, you know, cool ideas. So those are, uh, those are the, the skills. When you're working with parents, it can be very, <coughs> very frustrating when you're a coach. But again, remember, you're only the product deliverer. You're only supposed to give them this stuff and go through the stuff with them. You don't have to solve all the problems in their family. So you want to move very slowly. And again, treat the parents with respect and do the same thing you do with kids. Notice things positive about them. When you're in the home, notice, say, boy, I noticed how, um, how you uh, gave Johnny attention when he was quiet. And I uh, appreciate that you turned off the radio when you and I were talking. You know, that really helped or whatever. Uh, but try to find positive things you can say. Absorb angry confrontations. Don't win. Be, be an ally. Don't try to be, I'm right, you're wrong. Be an ally. You know, you're working together to help this kid be successful. Build on the strength. Set up very small steps. So when, when the parents are having issues, um, Let's say that the kid uh, doesn't want to go to school in the morning. Uh, you know, rather than expecting for the kid to have their teeth brushed and their, their clothes on and their breakfast eaten, you know, just say, you know, if he comes downstairs in his pajamas, you know, you tell him, you know, great job coming downstairs. <laughs> you know, little steps at a time. Praise issues in a positive way, like and admit mistakes. You know, as you, you as a as a coach, you can say, you know. I've done this with my kids so many times, you know, oh, and I just feel so bad about it. And this is information on materials. You'll find the needed materials for your intervention in the First Step Kit. 
If you don't have this readily available, you need to order the materials. The kit comes with three renewable packets for three interventions. Then renewable packets can be purchased as you need them. There are masters in the appendix that you can use to create some of the materials as you need them. Remember, your job is to facilitate cooperation between the teacher, the child, the child's parents, and the child's peers to support this student for taking the first step to school success. And I just wanted to let you know that the game is over. And do you think Vita made her points? Yeah! Yeah, she did! <laughs> she only needed five points today, and she, she got all five points. Isn't that amazing? Yay! Let's all give her a big clap. Okay, any uh, questions, concerns? Yes. How, um, how can we go about like, ordering the materials? How to do what? Ordering the materials? Uh, there's a website. It's, uh, I think it's on your handout. Uh, Sopris West is the distributor of the materials. And uh, you can order from them. Yes. Uh, you might have covered this already, but... I'm going to ask it anyway. <laughs> you start the program at a very er early age. Can you come back like when the child goes to fourth or fifth grade or maybe follow them for a couple of years? Or yeah, and actually we, we highly recommend that, we, that people do booster shots. Okay. So I have to tell you a funny story about that. Um, <clears throat> Bonnie, the, the coach that you've seen in the, in the thing, my colleague, uh, she, um, she was a coach for a kid. That was in kindergarten, and he was really, really, and he had a one-on-one -on -one assistant. You know, he was very aggressive, didn't follow directions. She was the coach. She worked really hard with him, and she totally got him to follow directions, to respond to the red and green card. Teacher took over. He did great. And for the rest of the year, he did awesome. But she said, you know, Anamika, I really should be there the first day of first grade to make sure that he knows that the expectations are the same in, with the new teacher. Well, so in Eugene, uh, school starts, I don't know, September 9th or something. And so Bonnie went to the first grade teacher and asked if he was there. And she says, oh, no, he moved to the coast. He moved to Florence. So, well, in Florence, school starts a week early. And so Bonnie says to me, oh, Anamika, he moved to, Flor to Florence. Do you know anybody? I say, yeah, I know the principal in Florence. So I called the principal. His name is Boomer. And I said, do you have this kid? And he says, oh, my gosh, do you know this kid? And I said, yeah. He says, oh, he's been here only a week, and he already has a one-on-one, -on -one and he's torn up the whole school. Okay, we'll be there tomorrow. So Bonnie and I drive over to the coast, which is about an hour drive. We get there, and here he is sitting in a, in a, in a room with an assistant, and he's totally being obnoxious. He's a first grader, and she doesn't know what to do. And Bonnie and I walk in, and he says, oh, no. <laughs> Don't tell me I have to be good at this school, too. <laughs> we showed him the cart, and within a week, he was back in the regular classroom doing great. But you know, yes. So it's very important that you make sure to let the following teacher know what works for this kid. You know, oh my gosh. And do you have any follow-up, like, in the long run to see how this kids do later on? Yeah. Well, the, the one, that, the study that we did, we, we followed them for four years. Oh. And, uh, but we didn't do boosters. Now, uh, we, haven't, we haven't had money to follow them uh, research-wise. But clinically speaking, we know that 50% of the kids that go through the program do really well. The other 50 they, well, it's usually because of implementation, that they're not, the teachers are not implementing with integrity. You know, they fall back into the criticism trap or... And you said it was for at-risk kids. Yes. So how did you screen, for example, for ADHD? It's the uh, efficacy study we did in Albuquerque with 100 kids. We just have taken all the children that were identified as HDHD and we, uh, we took the children that were identified as um, anxiety disorder, and we're looking at, at the data. And so, and we're almost done with this. And, and we, we find that the program is just as effective for those children. Yes. Yes. 
you have your hand first. Well, are you raise your hand. Yes. Thank you for um, raising your hand. With a follow up, did you also do it? Did it with the family in case that there's another sibling that has the same problem? No, we we have not done that. We we tell the parents they keep all the materials. So you don't have to give anything back, and they can do it with all the other children. And one was really funny. We had one uh, one family in Portland, and she had the mom was single mom. She had six kids, and we were doing first step with her first grader. And she says, well, I have six kids. You know, I can't spend five minutes alone with, with one kid. So we problem solved, and we decided that all the kids would go to a neighbor's house, and she would take 10 minutes with one, and then that one would go back, and then the other one, and she'd do all six of them for 10 minutes. She said it was the best time ever, you know, but it's problem solving like that. So she could spend time with each one of her kids for a few minutes, and a neighbor helped out. Can you talk about the adaptation for preschool? Oh, the adaptation. Well, the main thing is that we did that, the little red and green cards. We teach the, the, the classroom expectations. You, you're familiar with that now, where everybody holds a little red card and green card. The second thing is that we don't use um, the feedback card does not look like this. this the, the older kids, they get a card that's red on one side and green on the other. The little kids, we didn't want to have red, so we have a little slip that, and oh, and also the little kids don't want to take the card back to school. They want to keep it at home. So we made a feedback slip that the parents can cut in half, and they can keep one half at home, and one goes back to the teacher, and it's green. Now, if they don't make their criterion, they get a little white slip, and the little white slip says, Johnny played the red and green card game today, and we'll try again tomorrow. So we don't say that he didn't make his points. It's simply just a little white slip. The other thing is that the timings are um, uh, 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 different. You know, the, the schedule, the daily uh, summary chart is different. The, the timings are shorter. And then the coach phase is longer. The coach stays with the teacher for eight days instead of six days. Um, the other thing that we adapted for preschool is these home-based activities. Some of them we made more uh, developmentally appropriate for younger children. Um, those are really basically the, 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 main, the main adaptations. And it, and it all depends on the kid. You, know, how, you always look at the child and see how much they can take. And sometimes we do one session for 10 minutes here, and then maybe another session a few hours later, you know, depending. On. Um, I would like to show you, and you can think about questions, but I want to show you this. This is, uh, we, like I said, we had a Head Start grant, and uh, it, it, it came from uh, the Department of Education. And so at the end of the grant, we had to give a report, and we decided to um, make a video and show Washington, D.C., um, you know, what we've been doing. So this is a testimonial of a preschool kid, a Head Start kid, talking about first step. You have that happy face on your shirt. Did you play, did you play the red and green card game? Yeah, because this is a button. And what, why did you get that button? Because from that guy, because I was good. But he red card, green card. Oh, so you're a helper? Oh, yeah, but he will play the red card, green card the, the other day for this. Oh, and did you like playing the red card, green card game? Yes. What did it help you do? It helped me get points, and I the, the challenge of playing the red card, green card. When I played the red card, green card, I good. Then I get green cards. What kinds of things do you have to do to be good? Be nice and don't hit people and give them hugs oh. and love your family and love your friends. Oh, great. What happened to you at home when you brought your green card home? Did your mom do something special with you? My mom signs it and we have to bring it back home to school. Uh huh. And Matra, be nice. And and how old are you? I five now. I don't have my birthday. I was four. Okay. Now my five. Wow. And there's a new guy here. Yeah. Do you like it? Me, him. Yeah. And he's my very best 
Buddy. And so are you now following directions in class all the time? Uh-huh. And doing exactly what the teacher asks you to do? Uh-huh. That is so cool, Caleb. Thank you so much. I'm making Caleb. Uh-huh. I'm making a row. Do you want to So, Kelly, can you tell me what uh, you guys do to earn points on the red and green card? Um, um, to do the right thing and to help. So, when the teacher asks you to do something, what do you do? I do it. You do it. So, when she says sit crisscross applesauce, what do you do? I do it. And when she says it's time to clean up, what do you do? I do it. Yeah, and what happens when you do it? I do well good. You do really well, don't you? Hope, when you used to take your red and green card home, what did your mom say to you? She said, do you have another green card? No. And then did she do something special? I gotta do some salad. Something special? I had to help mom with the salad. Oh, with the salad. Let's give her a big hand. Yay! And who can tell me how did we earn points? Raise your hand. Thank you for raising your hand. How did we earn points? By helping her and do the right thing. Absolutely. Can you tell me how we earn points? Did we um get um we help her get the right thing? Absolutely. And you Excellent. know what? <clears throat> Jasmine has chosen to do a game called Doggy Doggy Where's Your Bug? Oh, but before but before she does that, she has something else special. Remember that all of you are going to earn one of these buttons, a good a helper button to be part, you know, of the Good Helper Club. And Jasmine knows somebody who has really been helping her today, and she wants to give that person a special button. Here you go, Jasmine. Whoa, see, and why, do you, why are you giving the button to Xenia? What did she do? Um, all points. That's right, she earned all the points and she helped you be a good friend, didn't she? 
Xenia, thank you for your help. Okay, so now. So, Jasmine, do you want to be the first doggy? Do you want to be doggy first? Okay. And is she going to pick, oh, oh, she's going to ask three people? No, we're going to have. Doggy, doggy, where's your bone? Somebody took it from your home. Wake up, doggy. <gasps> How did you know that? Oh, wow, that is smart. She's got a good sniffer. You have a good dog nose. Okay. <laughs> Marissa, you're the doggy. Okay, so that is the end of my presentation. <laughs> uh, I would like to do one last thing with you before I let you go, and that is I want you to think about um, things that, that you liked most about today's presentation. Uh, presentation. So what were some of the lights? Interactive. Interactive. What else? Positive. Stories. Positive. Reward. What? <laughs> Reward. Rewards. Rewards. <laughs> Your delivery. Delivery. Videos. Videos. They are helpful, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. Videos? Yeah. You're engaging. Engaging. What about the program? Anything about first oh, step? I like I really like um, how you can shift the focus of negativity on a child because of their negative behavior and have the rest of the kids begin to like them and engage them and I thought that, that was really beautiful. Change child uh, chat. Yeah. Child uh, uh, perception. perception. Children's perception of the perception of the identified okay. target. Uh, strategies. Stra strategies. Okay. Mm -hmm. Easy. I like that you can generalize it to the classroom. Generalize. It's a cooperative effort. Okay. Cooperative. Okay, great. Let's think about uh, wishes. What have you, what did you not get today that you had wished for when you came here this morning? <laughs> <laughs> Only things that have to do with first step. <laughs> of course. <laughs> a wand of my own. A wand of my own. A wand of my own. I'd like to have the video so I can show it to my teachers. Videos. They're available. They're like 10 bucks a piece or something. And, and if you're not a teacher like me, you know, I, part of it, I may not be able to use it. Okay. We've changed the classroom. But the adaptation, adaptation therapy. What? Adaptation for therapy. Adaptation. Well, I hope that you got something out of it that you can adapt it yourself. And one other question would be, do you have it only for parents? No. You can only for parents. It's really to help the child be successful at school. Yeah? Good. Well, you are totally fabulous. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful weekend. And thank you for your attention.